time. Get a two-piece basket or a sandwich combo. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. When it comes to fast food in America, there are some real winners and some real stinkers. Nobody expects gourmet food when they walk into one of these places, but people do have standards. So to help you choose more wisely, here are 10 fast food chains that are by far the worst in the country. I'm sorry, you're just not good enough. Hardee's Carl's Jr. This is impossible. How can this be? Hardee's was always a straggler, forever coming up behind competing burger chains in customer satisfaction surveys. Their burgers have been described as dry and flavorless, spongy, and without recognizable beef flavor, which are not exactly qualities anyone is looking for when seeking out a fast food burger. What a disappointment you've turned out to be. Depending on where you are in the country, you might recognize this chain as Carl's Jr., seen as the two companies joined forces in the 90s. But the food is the same mediocre quality no matter which coast you reside on, despite several attempts at rebranding, which seem to always flare out before liftoff. Please stop it now, you're embarrassing yourself. It can't be because of the company's racy advertising, but oddly enough, it seems to be a popular destination for senior citizens. Then again, maybe it is the advertising, or they are just looking for somewhere to hang out on a Tuesday afternoon. Papa John's. Do you know I know Papa John? The Papa John. Papa John's is yet another pizza chain in the running for serving the worst fast food in America, mainly because they have failed the cardinal test in pizza making, actually making good pizza. For some reason or another, Papa John's is still around, so clearly something is working. They have over 5,000 stores all over the country and have enjoyed decades of success as an alternative to Pizza Hut and Domino's, which is more a testament to how badly people need their pizza fix rather than the quality of their food. Time is money. Money is power. Power is pizza. Pizza is knowledge. Let's go. But for the rest of us, we're just hoping the madness ends sooner than later. Papa John's was never and will never be that good, and it regularly turns up on lists of the worst pizza chains in America, losing points among customers for lack of freshness and general lack of taste, as well as poor customer service and the drab in personal interiors of their restaurants. Sorry, Papa John's, maybe you can boast about quantity, but sometimes it's quality that counts. Listen, you gotta shape up. Panda Express. Chinese food is usually delicious and renowned for its variety of taste sensations, but you would never know it by eating at Panda Express. At a time when U.S.-China relations have sunk to a new low, some suspect that Panda Express might have had something to do with it, seeing as the food this chain offers is the culinary equivalent of a diplomatic slap in the face. It's devastating. You're devastated right now. It's a one-stop shop for factory-line, overly sweet, and MSG-doused stateside Chinese food, featuring all the generic favorites. General Tso's, stir fries, lo mein, and egg rolls. I got Panda Express! Did you get sugar chicken? That's kind of the only thing they have. But even these classics have been reduced to such a low standard of quality that it's probably a disservice to call it Chinese food. Famous as a food court staple, Panda Express has diminished in popularity over the years as customers seek out healthier, fresher food to chow on, and there have been a litany of complaints of poor food quality and high prices. But it's fair to say that this panda has never had far to climb down from in the first place. As usual, our expectations are disappointed. Sonic Drive-In Sonic is a cult favorite throughout the U.S. for their retro 50s throwback look, drive-in eating concept, and wait staff who, at many establishments, cheerfully deliver your food to you on roller skates. So for the sheer audacity of an immersive junk food experience, Sonic has always scored points. I'm healthy enough to admit that! But then, when you go ahead and take a bite into the food, Sonic leaves a lot to the imagination. More like a nightmare of previously frozen, deep-fried proportion, Sonic excels at serving up some of the unhealthiest, tasteless fast food available. Because if this is the best you can do, it's pathetic! With customers complaining about their food's lack of freshness and the unappetizing way everything ends up as a sore lump in the pit of their stomachs. Ugh. I'm never gonna eat or do anything ever again. And of course, it's likely you will start to experience a diminishing sense of self-respect after eating a week's worth of calories, fat, and carbohydrates in one sitting. 
Quiznos. New honey mustard chicken at Quiznos. Not now, Quiznos. Admittedly, Quiznos had a promising start as an alternative to sandwich chain Subway, only with healthier, fresher options. Early on in their reign, Quiznos offered customers a choice of fresh herbs and toppings, along with fresher ingredients, in an attempt to outshine their competition. But they gradually started scaling back this nonsense when they realized that people weren't terribly adventurous when it came to their sandwich choices. Uh, Krabby Patty. How original. And with extra onions. Daring today, aren't we? Now, Quiznos is more known as a mediocre rest stop plan B, serving basic and overpriced sandwiches, which has sent the company down a financial black hole they have yet to recover from. In recent years, they have been forced to close thousands of their restaurants across the country, which, if you know your math, is a lot of restaurants. Maybe the trick is to adapt or to be able to offer your customers something they can't easily make at home. But putting some cold cuts on bread with cheese and mayo and toasting it is as easy as it gets. It might be time for Quiznos to start reevaluating their reason for existing at all. I mean, really, what's the point? Red Robin. How come you're not dead yet, Red Robin? This burger chain, known for offering customers a pit of bottomless fries as a bribe just to eat there, ended up last place in the full service restaurant category on the American Customer Satisfaction Index. This Colorado-based chain's overall score has diminished precipitously over the years, with complaints of noise and dirtiness aplenty, and notoriously long wait times. And that's not to mention the general mediocre quality of their food, made all the more infuriating since they advertise their burgers as gourmet. This, my friends, is false advertising. Or is it gourmet? By now, Americans know a good burger. It's a classic item that can often be put together superbly, but Red Robin struggles at the basic level, and their financial struggle tells the tale. Operating at a massive loss, in part due to their prominence in fading American shopping malls, Red Robin has tried to keep optimistic, but the numbers aren't on their side. Blurring the lines between full service and fast food is not what customers necessarily are after these days, since who wants to wait 20 minutes for a table and then even longer for the food to come out when we are talking about a burger? What is going on in there? Why? What is taking so long? So Red Robin attempted to fix this by dispensing with their busboys and utilizing flashy, high-tech kitchen displays in a bid to save time. But people weren't having it. The technology was iffy and supremely confusing to customers who just wanted their burger, like, now. Add to this some egregious marketing stumbles, like a commercial in which a character blasted vegetarianism, liking it to a teenage girl phase, and you have the kind of nosedive you can only sit back and watch in horror or amazement. Jack in the Box Jack in the Box lives up to its name by offering food that, at first glance, scares you, then makes you laugh at the randomness of it all. Take into consideration that this chain sells burgers, pitas, teriyaki bowls, and tacos all in one big culturally appropriated mashup with enough trans fat and sodium content to last you days on end after sitting for a single meal. And yeah, that would be the healthy choice. Healthy for who? Actually, if you eat here, you're better off fasting the next three days. Case in point, the stacked grilled cheese munchie meal, which comes with not one but two tacos, a massive stacked grilled cheese burger concoction, and curly fries, almost hits the 2,000 calorie mark. But that's okay, since potatoes are vegetables, right? You're always trying to give me potatoes. What is it with you? I just think they're neat. The good stewards at the American Heart Association have probably suffered major heart palpitations just by glancing at the menu, as they've previously called out Jack in the Box as one of the worst trans fat offenders amongst all fast food chains. And the munchy meal in question is something that basically no American should ever be feasting on. Ever. Not even in your greasiest dreams, please. Mouth queen? No, stop, stop it, stop everything that you're doing, stop it. Jack in the Box is also notorious for a lethal food poisoning scandal that sickened 700 people around the country, which is not usually the kind of thing one can climb back from, but Jack has proven to be as resilient as the scariest Halloween monsters. They just keep coming back from the grave, which isn't really something any company should be proud of. 
Sabaro. Sabaro has been referred to as the least essential restaurant chain in America, and that's probably not far from the truth. If your company has to file for bankruptcy once, you know there might be some problems afoot, but if you have to declare bankruptcy twice in three years, it might be a sign from above that it's time to just stop. Just give up, Morty. It's just it's game over. Sabaro, however, just keeps chugging, despite a reputation for peddling some of the greasiest, least fresh pizza in the U.S., and stands as an insult to even the simplest New York slice, which it claims to be styling itself after. Ubiquitous in rest stops around the country, dingy corners of airport terminals, and many hundreds of random food courts, Sabaro is very well known, and for a time was quite popular among people who needed to fill up while on the run. But these days, with so many better pizza options available, Sabaro comes across as a mess. Cardboard pizza crust, assembly line processed cheese toppings, and tomato sauce that tastes like imitation baby food, Sabaro just doesn't cut it anymore in a world already saturated with decent pizza and pasta. You had options? Yeah, you had lots of options. Better options. It also doesn't help that this chain sells incredibly unhealthy fare. A single slice of Sabaro's pepperoni pizza will dose you with double the amount of recommended daily sodium, so you should eat only half a slice and call it quits. But who does that? My favorite New York pizza joint, and I'm gonna go get me a New York slice. Long John Silvers. My God, you're greasy. Industrially farmed, deep fried from frozen seafood was something that regular Americans tolerated as a dinner option in the past, but these days, with so many people's tastes shifting and so much healthier grub available, Long John Silver's comes up lagging. This old Kentucky pirate still counts as a fairly ubiquitous restaurant chain with strongholds throughout the U.S., but one taste of their menu items and you might understand why so many people have abandoned ship. This chain has won some accolades, but not in the way they might have wanted. Say what now? The Center for Science and Public Interest has recently declared that Long John Silver's belongs in a watery grave, singling out their big catch menu item, a giant hunk of deep fried haddock, fried hush puppies, and fried onion rings for containing a ton of calories and even more sodium. And further investigation into their culinary practices uncovered far more unhealthy fat and calorie content attached to the meals than the company's listed nutritional information has indicated, which led the franchise to formally ban trans fat in 2014. This is surely a bright spot, but it hasn't exactly made the food any healthier. Long John Silver's still proudly serves cracklings as a secret menu item, their term for excess fried batter, which you can eat as a completely nutritionless meal in itself. Right there, I want some of that stuff, like the garbage on the bottom. I want some of it, like, put some of that into my treasure chest. Crystal. Beloved by late-night revelers, college students, and anybody else who is wandering the streets at 2 a.m., Crystal absolutely fills a much-needed niche among late-night junk food eateries. And to be fair, they do manage to offer something comfortingly consistent. Tiny burger sliders, which on first glance are so small, they trick your mind into thinking you can eat a dozen and still walk afterwards. Belly button moving from any to Cody. Crystal is a grease addict's pit of despair, and their burgers tend to lean more on the side of reused frying oil and white bread than any meat product you might be familiar with. If there ever was a need for rehab from fast food, Crystal just might be the reason. It's that bad? There is one tidbit of Crystal Burger lore which is worth noting and might be this chain's crowning achievement. No one was more of a fan than the king himself, Elvis Presley, who reportedly would order hundreds of Crystal sliders at a time to feast on after shows or in the studio. We're not blaming Crystal, but we all know how that ended up. It went down badly. Stick around, tap on that screen for more great videos, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.